Hey again guys, Mr. Zigner here. We're looking at lesson 5-6, Algebra, Solving Equations. So we'll be looking at the inverse property of multiplication. We'll be finding multiplicative inverses, looking at the multiplication property of equality, and then we'll solve division and multiplication equations. Again, you can see here that we're solving equations with rational number solutions. Two, two words we'll be defining are multiplicative inverse and reciprocal. All right, so we start off here with the inverse property of multiplication. The product of a number and its multiplicative inverse is one. Now, the multiplicative inverse of a number, well, in this case, if we just look at fractions, you can see here, we just take the fraction and well, the easy way of thinking about it is you flip it over. So 3 fourths becomes 4 thirds. Here you can see in algebra how it lays it out nicely no matter what your numbers are. So if you have A over B, so whatever your numerator is and whatever your denominator is, if you flip them over, now it would be B over A. Well, that always equals 1. Let me uh, show you another example. How about... 5 over 6, 5 sixths. Well, if I multiply that by its reciprocal, its multiplicative inverse, that would be 6 over 5. Multiply our numerators together, we get 30. Multiply our denominators together, we again get 30. And here's why it's 1, because 30 divided by 30 is, of course, 1. So again, when we multiply a number and its multiplicative inverse, we always end up with 1. Okay, so what is the multiplicative inverse of 5 eighths? Well, as we were just talking about, all you have to do is flip it over. So wouldn't that be just 8 fifths? Problem is, I don't see 8 fifths anywhere over here. Do you know why? Probably because 8 fifths is improper. So let's turn this into a mixed number and see if that matches up with one of these answers over here. Now, how many fives go into eight? What is eight divided by five? Well, it goes in one time. And what, the, what would the remainder be? Now, let's, let's set up that division problem. Again, we have eight divided by five. Five goes into eight one time. One times five is five. We subtract and get three. Okay, so our remainder is 3. So really how that works down here is it would be 1 and 3. And what was our original denominator? 5. 1 and 3 fifths. Oh, there it is. So 1 and 3 fifths is the multiplicative inverse of 5 eighths. Find the multiplicative inverse of 4 and 1 third. Okay. Well, it's not as easy as just flipping it over because we have a mixed number here. All right, so we're going to have to turn this into an improper fraction first. Do you remember how to do that? We do 3 times 4. That's 12. And then we add 1. So 3 times 4 is 12. Plus 1 is 13. Okay, so the numerator would be 13. And what's the denominator? Well, the same as it was. So 13 thirds. So 4 and 1 third is equal to 13 thirds. But that's not the multiplicative inverse. That is what 4 and 1 third is. Now we do the little flip it over thing. So that would be 3 over 13. Does that match one of our answers? Yep, there it is. And just to verify again, watch how if you multiply these together, 13 times 3 is 39. 3 times 13, 39. And 39 divided by 39 is 1. There's that whole multiplicative inverse rule. When you multiply a number and its reciprocal, you end up with 1. So that's what they call a multiplicative inverse. Moving on. Okay, something slightly new. The multiplication property of equality. It says if you multiply each side of an equation by the same non-zero number, the two sides remain equal. Well, how does that look? Well, if you have 5 equals 5, and then multiply both sides by 2, well, it's still equal. You still have 10 on both sides. So the equation stays 
equal. Here, x over 2 equals negative 3. Well, if you multiply both sides by 2, what happens? Well, these 2's cancel out because really this becomes 2 divided by 2. And you're left with your x. Now, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. So there we go. We basically solved this division equation using multiplication. Let's try another one. Here, 2 thirds of x equals 4. Well, let's multiply by the reciprocal, the multiplicative inverse. It's kind of the same thing of 2 thirds. Well, that would be 3 halves. Now, 3 halves times 2 thirds, we know that equals 1. And 1 times x is just x. But on the other side, we have 3 halves times 4. Now, we dealt with this in a previous video. How do we multiply a fraction times a whole number? We just put that whole number over 1. So really, we'd have 3 times 4 is 12 over 2 times 1 is 2. And as you can see, 12 divided by 2 is 6. All right, let's try another one. So solve m divided by 9, or you could just say m over 9, equals 4. Okay, m over 9, and that's going to equal 4. Well, we have our variable, and they're dividing it by 9. The opposite of dividing by 9 would be multiplying by 9. So let's multiply both sides of our equation by 9 using that multiplicative property of equality. All right. Well, these two 9s cancel out. We have times 9 divided by 9. They're opposites. They equal 1, and 1 times m is just m. Over here, we have 9 times 4, and that's 36. And there's our answer, 36. Just to check that out, 36 divided by 9, yep, that is 4. So that answer does end up working for us. Uh-oh, a tougher one with decimals. 6.8 equals m over 3.2. All right, we're dividing by 3.2, so the opposite of that would be to multiply by 3.2. All right, now that that's set up, these two, of course, cancel out. Times 3.2 divided by 3.2, they equal 1. So I'm left with just my variable of m on the right-hand side. Uh, now I have to figure this out. So 3.2 times 6.8. Let me set that up here. 3.2, 6.8, I'm going to multiply those. Let's see, 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 3 is 24, plus 1 is 25. Now I have 6 times 2 is 12. And 6 times 3 is 18, plus 1 is 19. Okay, now I just need to add all that up. I didn't leave myself much room down here, did I? 6, 5 plus 2 is 7, 9 plus 2 is 11, and 1 plus 1 is 2. Now, I had one, two numbers after the decimal in my problem up here, so I need one, two numbers after the decimal in my answer. Sorry about squishing it down there, but it looks like we found our answer, 21.76. All right, let's move on. 3 eighths x equals 3 fourths. 3 eighths x equals 3 fourths. All right, let's get to work on this. We're going to multiply both sides by the multiplicative inverse, the reciprocal of 3 eighths. So that would be 8 thirds. 8 thirds. All right. Well, these cancel out. They equal 1, and 1 times x is just x. Now we just have to solve this side. But do you see what I see? We can actually do some cross-canceling here. We can divide the diagonals by um, a common factor. Let's divide 8 and 4 by 4. All right. Well, 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. Now, going the other direction here, 3 and 3 can both be divided by 3. 
Well, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. So we've divided the diagonal numbers by the same factor. Now let's multiply everything together. So we have 1 times 2 on top, that's 2. 1 times 1 on the bottom, that's 1. So really that equals 2 over 1. But of course, 2 divided by 1 is simply 2. There we go. So it turns out 3 eighths times 2 equals 3 fourths. A little word problem. Jeffrey selected 5 sixths of the baseball cards. So 5 sixths of, I know of means times, we've mentioned this on a couple videos, the baseball cards in a pack to trade with his friends. Oh, so we don't know how many baseball cards are in the pack. How about I use maybe B for baseball cards. If he selected 15 cards, okay, so he selected 15 cards, how many cards were in the pack? So we need to find 5 sixths times B equals 15. 5 sixths of the baseball cards were 15 cards. So let's figure out how many baseball cards there were. Okay, to solve this, we again need to multiply by the multiplicative inverse or reciprocal. Same thing. So we have 6 fifths and 6 fifths. These, once again, cancel out because they equal 1. It'd be 30 over 30, which equals 1, and 1 times b is just b. But now, here we have 15 times 6 over 5. I'm going to make that 15 over 1 uh, times, rather, 6 over 5. Now, is there any factoring we can do here? Oh, yes, we can divide 15 and 5 by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 5 divided by 5 is 1. Now let's multiply across. 3 times 6 is 18. And 1 times 1 is 1. 18 divided by 1 is 18. There it is. There were 18 cards in that pack. Hey, we made it to the end. Thanks for joining me today for Solving Equations in Chapter 5, Lesson 6. Check out my website at mattzigner.com. Students, please do your questions below my video on my website. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me as we work our way through the 7th grade Math Connects textbook. Feel free to email me with any questions. My website is www.mattzigner.com. On my site, you'll find links to my math blog, some of my favorite educational sites, and lots of helpful information for students, parents, and teachers. See you next time.